bless you people of God welcome back to this channel Pastor Grace Donald this is my name and today I'm taking the testimony of God's general Bishop David Oyedipo oh my god I'm just gonna touch a little aspect of his life of his financial glory you know people don't understand um how god blesses you know they they seem to look at your now without understanding the story behind your glory so today i'm just going to touch a little of the story behind the financial glory of god's servants bishop david Oyedepo. i have the story here all the way from 1986 that's a long time if you calculate that now, that should be like 30 something years. That's a long time. So you see that the joint didn't just begin today. When you look at him and you see him in private jet and you see all the wonderful things he's doing, the universities, the schools, the, the everything that God has led him to achieve in life, in ministry, you probably think that he just started now. But nothing starts now. There is a story behind the glory. So, in case you have never heard the story behind this glory, I'm just going to share a bit of it with you this morning. I'm sure that this will bless you. So, 1986, we're in 2022. Mm. 1986, that's about 36 years when the story happened. So, I'm going to tell, read this to you. Please listen. By the way, I appreciate every one of you who has been following me. I'm watching my videos. May God bless you all. Thank you all for sharing my videos. Thank you for the comments and the likes. Please share this again with somebody. And I'm sure that the person will thank you very well. Hallelujah. So in 1986, I was to travel from Kaduna with my wife for my sister-in-law's wedding. That's Bishop Uyedipo himself speaking in this testimony. The trip required 500 naira. See, 500 naira is just like chicken change now. Then it had a lot of value. I did not have any dime. And God knew that under no condition will I ever touch his money. He was already into ministry. He's talking about touching the tithes or the offerings of the church. Imagine that discipline. Imagine that fear of God. Imagine that determination to obey God and do things right. Not even if my mother was the one getting married. <laughs> you won't touch that money. Really, it was his mother that needed it. At 5 p.m. the day before the trip, someone from another church by name S.K. Adam drove like a chariot to my house. With a gift of 600 naira. 600 naira. Remember, I needed 500. Nobody knew under heaven that I was traveling. You know, I don't announce my trips. Bishop Oyedi was still talking. He said, God asked him to bring it for me. God asked him to bring 600 naira because he knew I would still pay. My tight from it. <laughs> Imagine that. So, if he needed 500, God wanted to make it more than that. Trust him fully well that this is my son. Hmm. If I give him 500, he will remove the tight and the money will no more be enough for him. Now, many years after that testimony, you see the man that we are talking about today is in financial fortune kind of wealth that only God can give. The one that does not have sorrow to it is enjoying true riches. Remember the standard. As a pastor, he did not touch church money, God's money. And to date, he still teaches that. And you separate church money from your money. Don't mess it up. 
church money should be for church, God's money for God, and your finance, your own money for you. And tithe, you cannot play with, you cannot joke with. Imagine, 1986, this man was tithing, and to date, he's still tithing. And no tight corner could stop him from obeying that covenant. That is a covenant seat to wear it. A covenant rope to wear it. And you wouldn't toy with it. Today, Bishop Oyedipo's ministry has 11 bank accounts in billions in reserve, according to the words of Apostle Johnson Suleiman recently. The Nigeria Tele Evangelist and the Senior Pastor General of Asia of Omega Fire Ministry International, Apostle Joseph Suleiman, revealed in a video trending online that Bishop Oyedipo's ministry has 11 bank accounts in billions reserved that they are not touching. Now, I don't know about 11, but I've heard several of Bishop Oyedipo speak that there is a reserved account that is not spendable not spendable it's there until god says this is what we're going to do with it and that is how financially balanced that man man of god is and that is how financially organized he is he's ready for any kind of crisis he's keeping it there until when the time comes <laughs> hallelujah here is everything Apostle Joseph Suleiman said to the, in the trending video. According to Apostle Suleiman, he's is the one talking and I'm quoting him. I was in a hotel to rest and someone said, Bishop Oyedipo just left this room, the same room he entered as Apostle Suleiman. I said, I don't understand. Which Oyedipo? Is it the same Oyedipo we all know? And he said, yes, he slept on this bed. Suleiman talking now. I asked everybody to get out. And I laid down, rolling from one end to another. Praying, I tap, I draw. <laughs> Who wouldn't tap? If I were there, I would do, I should, I would do more. <laughs> Who wouldn't tap, Grace? But remember that it's not just enough to tap. We have to look for what he did to get there. When you do what he did, God is not partial. You will also get the same results that he got. Now one day, the Archbishop Idausa was seated in his room. Apostle Suleiman still talking now. Was seated in his room and God's servant Bishop Oyedipo came to him. And as usual, the Archbishop told him, Open under the bed and take money. Bishop Oyedipo opened it and pushed the money inside and said, give, don't give me money. Give me what brings money. That is, don't give me fish. Teach me how to fish. How to fish. <laughs> Keep it and teach me what brings money. Hmm. I like that. You know, some people are so used to collecting welfare, collecting welfare. They will never ask you, teach me how to make this money too. If you are still in that category, this should be your turn around. Don't just collect from people. Find that how they are being blessed. Tell them to teach you. It's better to give than to receive. Be among the givers and not just the receivers. Bishop Oyedipo is running universities like secondary school, and that is true. He's running four universities. For federal government to run one is difficult. Of course, we know that ASU will strike and everything has proved to us. And that is true. Sometimes they don't even pay, coupled with ASU strike, and one man is running four universities without stress. That is the story of Bishop Oyedipo. I heard Bishop Oyedipo talking the other day. He said they have 11 bank accounts that they don't touch. They have 11 bank accounts in, me, in billions. In billions, I repeat, in reserve. 
that they are not touching. Listen, there are people that are not individual. They are governments. Yes. Bishop Oyeriko alone on his own. If God gives him a mandate to rule over Nigeria as the president, we do much better as far as I'm concerned. With even what he has saved by himself in his ministry, he can better the whole nation. But I guess God has not led him in that aspect. I wish. The man is so organized. He's so disciplined. Grace is really at work in his life. Listen, there are people that are really more than government. Do you know what it means to build a university? Not just build, but to also run it as somebody has for and is running them sweatlessly, stresslessly, not owing anybody, any teacher, any professor, any lecturer, or where to go. And do you know that there's constant light in this university? Light is one challenge of Nigeria, electricity. But in these universities, there's constant light, just like we have in Europe. Bishop Oyedipo is running four institutions effortlessly. He's not losing sleep or cracking his head, and they are without strike, not even for one day. Which lecturer will protest when he's well paid? With all the fringe benefits, who doesn't like good things? Hallelujah. Did you hear that testimony coming from Apostle Justice Sulema about Bishop Oyedipo? I remember from the beginning of this testimony, I told you some of the little things. There are so many other things he did when he was coming up. There were days that he didn't have food on his table. You may be at that level now. Trust God. Tithe correctly. Don't joke with God's money. Give God his portion and don't touch God's money. Don't borrow from God's money. Whether you're into ministry or an individual, don't borrow your tithe and say, God, you understand. I'll give you later. I want to quickly to do this first. It's better you don't do that thing than to touch God's money. Don't play with your tithe. When God sees that you are faithful with the little, he will commit unto you the true riches. He will not give it to those that do not have value of fear and discipline. He give it to those that have value from the kingdom, that have the fear of God, and that have the discipline to obey God. May you be in that category, and may your financial burdens be lifted as you continue to practice these truths. As you begin to practice these truths, may it set you free from the bondage of poverty, of lack and want of borrowing, in the name of Jesus. I love you all. Please, if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, do well to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. I promise to always bring you faith boosting, boosting testimonies. Faith boosting testimonies. And you will continue to enjoy the glory of God as your faith is boosted. God bless you. I'll see you again in my next testimony. Until then, stay blessed and keep having a wonderful time working with God. And Keep having awesome testimonies in your work with God. God bless you all. Bye.